Testing one, two, three. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm here. And we shall continue on with chapter five. Which thankfully is less pages this time, but still enough to make me want to cry. Let's see, let's see. System software versus application software. Hello. Hello, music boy. How art thou? How art thou? Alright, we're going to continue with system software versus application software. Get your ears prepared, everybody. You're gonna be like that one meme of Patrick going to sleep. I tried actually reading some of this earlier, but uh, I was unable to. I got really bored really fast. System so okay. Computers run two types of software. System software and application software. Ah, oh, here it is. If you hear clipping in the background, it's because I'm using a nail clipper. System software consists of the operating system and utility programs that control your computer. What? Man, tax credit. Maybe. Or some what was that? That was weird. Oh, uh, this is a video. Let's transition to February jazz. <laughs> because I hated... I gotta get rid of that one. I gotta, like, make a playlist on my channel. <laughs> uh, uh, like, a, a playlist of all, like, the background music. Because I keep saying I'm gonna do it, and then I always, like, forget. System, all right, compute, system, application software. System software consists of the operating system and utility programs that control your computer and allow you to use it. These programs enable the computer to boot, to launch application programs, and to facilitate important jobs, such as transferring files from one storage medium to another, configuring your computer to work with the hardware connected to it. Connecting your computer to a network, managing files on your hard drive, and protecting your computer from unauthorized use. Application software includes all the programs that allow you to perform specific tasks on your computer, such as writing a letter, preparing an invoice, viewing a web page, listening to a music file, checking the inventory of a particular product, playing a game, preparing financial statements, designing a home, and so forth. Application software is discussed in detail in chapter six. In practice, the difference between system and application software is not always straightforward. Some programs, such as those used to burn DVDs, were originally viewed as utility programs. Today, these programs typically contain a variety of additional features, such as the ability to organize and play music and other media files, transfer videos and digital photos to the computer, editing videos and photos, create DVD movies, and create slideshows. Consequently, these programs now fit the definition of application software more closely. On the other hand, system software today typically contains several application software components. For example, the Microsoft Windows operating system includes a photo editing program. Hold it. Programs. A variety of application programs, including a web browser, a calculator, a calendar program, a photo editing program, an email program, and a text, edit a text editing program. A program classification as system or application software can usually depends on the principal functions of the software of the program, and the distinction between the two categories is not always clear cut. A computer's operating system is a collection of programs that manage and coordinate the activities taking place within the computer, and it is the moment it is the most crucial piece of software installed on the computer. The operating system boots, the computer launches application software, and ensures that all actions requested by the user are valid and proceed in an orderly fashion. For example, when you see the command of your computer store, 
It, when you issue the command for your computer to store a document on your hard drive, the operating system may, must perform the following steps. One, make sure that the specified hard drive exists. Two, verify that there is adequate space on the hard drive to store the documents and then store the documents in the location and three update the soft update the hard drive's directory with the file name and dislocation for the file so for that file so that the document can be retrieved again when needed in addition to managing all the resources associated with your local computer the operating system also facilitates connections in the to the internet and other networks in general, the operating system deserves the operating system serves as an inter intermediary between the user and the computer, as well as between application programs and the computer system's hardware. Without an operating system, no other program can run, and the computer cannot function. Many tasks performed by the operating system, however, go unnoticed by the user because the operating system works in the background much of the time. <sighs> Operating systems has a wide range of functions. Some of the most important are discussed next. Let's see. Alright, let's see, figure one, illustrations. One of the principal roles of every operating system is to translate user instructions into a form the computer can understand. It also translates any feedback from hardware, such as a signal that the printer has run out of paper or has, or that a hardware device has been connected to the computer. Okay, I unmuted it. I almost, <laughs> almost was gonna be like, I didn't unmute the thing. We've been silent the whole time. Computer. Into a form that the user can understand. The means by which an operating system or an other or any other program interacts with the user is called the user interface. User interfaces can be text-based or graphics-based, as discussed in more detail shortly. Most, if not most, but uh, not all, operating systems today use a graphical user interface (GUI). As discussed in Chapter One, the first task your operating system performs when your power when you power up your computer is to boot the computer during the computer during the boot process. The essential portion of core portion of core of the operating system known called the kernel is loaded into the memory the kernel remain reminds remains in memory the entire time the computer is on so that it is always available other parts of the operating system are retrieved from the hard drive and loaded into the memory when they are needed before the boot process ends the operating system determines the hardware device that are devices that are connected to the computer and configured poorly Pro configured properly and it reads an opening batch of instructions. These startup instructions, which the user can customize to some extent when necessary, assign tasks for the operating system to carry out each time the computer boosts. Boots, such as launching the secu a security program to run continuously in the background to detect possible threats. Typically, many programs are run to in the background at all, all the time even before the user launches any application software. The window task manager shown in figure blah lists all the programs and processes program tasks currently running on the computer. Some of these programs are startup programs that are launched automatically by the operating system during the boot process. Regardless of how programs are, are launched, they all consume memory and processing power. To view the programs that will run each time the counter, the computer boots, the computer boots, or to remove a program from the startup list, Windows users can use the startup tab on the task manager, as shown in blah. To avoid creating a problem with your computer, however, do not disable a program from the startup list without knowing absolutely what the program does and that it can be safely disabled. 
Other system configuration information is stored in the Windows registry files, which should be modified only by the Windows program or by advanced Windows users. The operating system also configured all devices connected to a computer. Small programs called device drivers, or simply drivers, are used to communicate with peripheral devices, such as monitors, printers, portable storage devices, and keyboards. Most operating systems today include the drivers need for the most common peripheral device. In addition, the drivers must co often comes on a CD package with the peripherals, peripheral device, or they can be downloaded from the manufacturer's website. Most operating systems today look for and recognize new devices each time the computer boots. If, the, if a new computer device is found, the, compu the operating system typically tries to install, <laughs> or you can just disable it and see what happens. A little noted. No, nothing, co nothing come in CD anymore. Yeah. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Computer boots. If the device is found, the operating system typically tries to install the appropriate drivers automatically in order to get the new hard drive hardware ready to use. Because USB devices can be connected to a computer when the computer is running, those devices are recognized and configured as needed each time they are are plugged into the computer. Once a device and its drivers and its driver have been installed properly, they usually find they usually work fine. If the device file if the device driver file is deleted, becomes corrupted, or has a conflict with another piece of software, then the device will no longer work. Usually the operating system detects problems like this during the boot process and notifies the user, and then tries to reinstall the driver automatically. If the operating system is unable to correct the problem, the user can reinstall the driver manually. You may also need to update or reinstall some device drivers if you upgrade your operating system to a newer version. To keep your system up to date, many operating systems have an option to check the operating system updates automatically, including updated driver files on a regular basis enable these automatic updates is a good enabling these automatic updates is a good idea to keep your system running smoothly and protect from new threats like the computer virus discussed in chapter 9 managing network connections <sighs> the operating system is also in charge of managing your network connections such as a wired connection to a home or office network or wireless connection at home school, work, and or on the go. For instance, as you move into range of wireless network, the operating system will notify you that a new wireless network is available and then either connect your device to that network or wait for your instructions to connect with that network. Connect with the network, depending on your device's wireless network settings. If at any time you lose a network connection, the operating system will try and fix it, such as by reset resetting your device's network adapter, such as network adapter. If your device connects to a secure network, the operating system will prompt you for the appropriate password when needed and then connect your device to the network and after verifying the password is correct. Alright, as you work on as you work on your computer, the operating system continuously manages your computer's resources, such as software, disk space, and memory, and makes you them and makes them available to devices and programs when they are needed. If a program if a problem occurs, such as a program such as a program stop such as a program stops functioning or too many programs are open for the amount of memory installed in the computer, the operating system notifies the user and tries to correct the problem, often by closing the offended program. If the problem cannot be corrected by the appropriate system, then the user typically needs to reboot the computer. As part of the managing system resources, the operating system schedules jobs such as documents to be printed or files to be retrieved for, from a hard drive to be performed using these those resources. Scheduling routines in the operating system determine the order in which jobs are carried out, as well as which commands get executed first if the user is working with more than one program at one time, 
or if the computer, such as a server or a mainframe, support multiple users. Another important task that the operating system performs is file management, keeping track of the files stored in your computer so that they can be retrieved when needed. As discussed in chapter 3, you can organize the files on a storage medium onto the into folders to simplify the ma file management. Usually the operating file system files are stored inside one folder, such as the Windows folder, and each application program is stored in its own separate folder inside of a main program folder, such as a program files. <sighs> Other folders designed for storing b data files are typically created by the operating system for each user, such as a document, such as documents, music, pictures, and pictures folders. Individuals may create additional folders as desired to keep their files organized, 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 yeah, organized. Folders can contain both files and other file folders, so it's called subfolders. Full files and folders are usually viewed in a hierarchical format the top of the hierarchy of any storage medium is called the root directory, such as C for the, for the root directory of the hard drive C shown in blah. The root directory typically contains both files and folders. To access a file, you generally navigate the, file, the, fo the folder containing that file by opening the appropriate folder, file, and subfolders the appropriate drive folder and subfolders. Alternately, you can specify a path to the file's exact location. Uh, location. For example, the path documents letters Mary leads through the root directory to, of the C drive and the documents and letters folders to the file named Mary. A similar path can also be used to access files John and Bill. As discussed in chapter 3, use specific time for file name for each file when you initially save the file on a storage medium. There can only be one file of the exact same file name in any particular folder, folder of, on a storage medium. File names rule ver rules vary with each operating system. For instance, Windows support, supports file names that are one to 260 characters long. The length includes the entire path of the file's location and may include numbers, letters, spaces, and, act and any special characters such as slash left, slash right, colon, star, question mark, commas, left, right, and Dash. Upward dash. File names typically include include a file extension. Usually three or four characters precede by a period. At the end of the file name, which indicates the file the type of file, file extensions are automatically added to a file name by the program in which the fi that file is created. Although sometimes the user may have a choice of file extensions supported by the programs, by the brother program. File extensions should not be changed by the user because the operating system uses them to identify the program that should be used to open the file. For instance, if you issue a command to open a file named letter to mom dot, dot docs, the file will open using the Microsoft Word program, assuming the device being used to access has access to a recent version of the program because the docs file extension is associated with recent versions of the Microsoft Word program. Files can be opened as well as moved, copied and re copied, renamed and deleted using a file management system program file management program such as File Explorer, you may not explore you may not be able to see the file extension in your file management program. However, because they are usually hidden by default, the however, because they are usually hidden by default. 
The File Explorer file management program and other utilities typically includes included in an operating system are discussed near the end of the chapter. Security. A, prog- a computer's operating system can be can use passwords, biometric characteristics such as pring- fingerprints, and other security procedures to limit access to the computer and other f- system resources in to only authorized users. Most operating systems also include other security features such as an integrated firewall to protect against unauthorized access via the internet or an operate or operation or an operation to download and install security patches. Small program updates that correct known security pro- problems automatically f- from the operating system's manufacturer on a regular basis. Operating system passwords can also be used to ensure that administrative level, level operating system tasks such as installing programs or changing system settings are performed only by authorizing users. Password, bi- passwords, biometrics, and other security issues related to networks and the internet are discussed in detail in chapter 9. Give it up for day 19. Give it up for chapter 9. Give it up for chapter 9. Operating systems often utilize various processing techniques in order to operate more efficiently. The increase of the amount the increase the and increase the amount of processing the computer can perform in any given time period. Some of the techniques most commonly used by operating systems to increase efficiency are discussed in the next few sections. Multitasking refers to the ability of an operating system to have more than one program, also called a task, open at one time. For example, multitasking allows a user to edit a spreadsheet file in one window while loading the web page in another window or to retrieve new email messages in one window while a word processing document is open in another window. Without the ability to multitask, an operating system would require the user to close one program before opening another program. Virtually all operating systems today support multitasking. Although multitasking enables the user to work from multiple programs at one time, a single CPU core cannot execute more than one task at a time. Unless Intel's hyper-threading hyper-thread technolo- technology or another technology that allows a single core to function as two cores is used, as discussed in Chapter 2. Consequently, the CPU rotates between processing tasks, but it works so quickly that it appears to the user that all programs are executing at the same time. However, CPUs with multiple cores can execute multiple tasks at one time, as discussed shortly. Multi-threading. A thread is a consequent is a sequence of instructions within a program that is independent from other threads, such as a spe- such as spell checking, printing, and opening documents in a word processing program. Operating systems that support multi-threading have the ability to rotate between multiple threads, similarly in to the way multitasking can rotate between multiple programs, so that processing to complete faster and more efficiently, even though only one thread is executed by a single core at one time. Most operating systems support multi-threading. As discussed in Chapter 2, both multiprocessing and th- parallel processing involve using two or more CPUs or multiple cores in a single CPU in one computer to perform work, perform work more efficiently. The primary difference between these, between these two techniques is that with... Mm, oh... <laughs> the headphones almost fell off. Printing between these two things is multi processing. Each CPU or core typically works on a different job with parallel processing. With parallel processing, the CPU or cores usually work together to complete the jo- one job more quickly. In either in either case, tasks are performed simultaneously at exactly the same time. In contrast, multitasking and multithreading use a single CPU or core and process tasks sequentially by rotating through tasks, 
as discussed previously. Blah illustrates the difference between sequence blah 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 with Taz's personal computer. Multiprocessing is supported by most operating systems and is used with personal computers that have multi-core CPUs, as well as with servers and multi-frame compute computers that have multi-core CPUs and or multiple CPUs. Parallel processing is u- is used most often with supercomputers. Memory management. Because many of today's programs are manager- memory intensive, good memory management, which involves optimizing the use of the main memory, RAM, can al- can help speed up processing. The operating system allocates RAM to pro- programs as needed and then reclaims that memory when the program is closed. Because each additional running program or open windows consumes memory, users can also help with memory management by limiting the number of startup programs to only the ones that are absolutely necessary, as well as by closing windows when they are no longer needed. On file, on memory management techniques, one memory management technique frequently used by operating systems is virtual memory, which use a portion of the computer's hard drive in addition, in additional RAM, as additional RAM. All programs and data is located in RAM are it, <sighs> are divided into fixed length pages or variable length length segments between on the between depending on the operating system being used when the amount of ram required exceeds the amount of ram available the operating system moves to moves pages with from ram to the virtual memory area of the hard drive this area is called the page file or swap file. Consequently, as the program is executed, some of the program may be stored stored in RAM and some in virtual memory. As RAM gets full, pages are moved to virtual memory, and as pages stored in virtual memory are required as re- are required, they are retrieved from virtual memory and moved to RAM. These page, this paging or swapping pay process continues until the program finishes executing. Virtual memory allows you to move, use to use more memory than is physically available on your computer, but using virtual memory is slower than just using RAM. Most operating systems today allow the user to specify the total amount of hard drive space to the use of virtu- for virtual memory to be used for virtual memory. Some input and output devices are exceedingly slow compared to today's CPUs for the CP- if the CPU had to wait for the- these slower devices to finish their work, the computer system would experience a horrendous bottleneck. For example, suppose a user sends a 100-page document to the printer. Assuming the printer can output 20 pages per minute, if put in it, it would take 5 minutes for the document to finish printing. (sighs) If the CPU had to wait for the print job to be completed before performing other tasks, the computer would be tied up for five minutes. To avoid this problem, most operating systems use buffering and spooling. A buffer is is an area in RAM or on the hard drive designation designated to hold data that is wanting to be used by the computer. Typically on this way, on its way in and out of the computer system. For instance, a keyboard buffer stores characters as they are entered via the keyboard. And a print buffer stores documents that are writing that are waiting to be printed. The process of placing documents in a buffer so they can be retrieved by the application device when needed is called buffering or spooling. (sighs) One common use of buffering and spooling is print spooling. Print spooling allows multiple documents to be be sent to the printer 
at one time and to print one after the other in the background while the computer and user are performing other tasks. The documents waiting to be printed are said to be in a print queue, which designa designates the order the, uh, the documents will be pinned. While in the while in the print queue, most operating systems al systems allow the user to cancel print jobs and pass the printer and pass the printer. Some also allow the use the user to prioritize the documents in the printing queue. Although originally and primarily for keyboard input, input and print jobs, most computers are operating systems today, and operating systems today are several other buffers to speed operation. For instance, it is common today for computers to use benef buffers to assist in redisplaying re images on the screen and to temporarily store data that is in the process of being burnt onto a DVD or being streamed from the internet, such as video and other multimedia content. I am tired. There are different types of operating systems available to meet different needs. Some of the major distinctions among operating systems include the type of user interface utilized, the category of device the operating system will be used with, and the type of processing an operating system is designed for. As mentioned earlier in this chapter, a user interface of, is the memor, memor, manner is the manner of, in which an operating system interacts with its user. Most operating systems today use a graphics user interface (GUI). The older DOS operating systems and some versions of the UNIX, UN The Linux operating systems use a commercial line interface. <sighs> the older DOS operating program, operating system, and various Unix. Although graphics, wait, common operating system use a common line interface. Although graphics versions of UNX, UNIX and Linux are available, keyboard line interface requires users to put commands using the keyboard. A graphical user interface allows the user to issue commands by selecting icons, buttons, menu items, and other graphical objects, typically with a mouse, pen, or finger. Hold on one second, everybody.
I am back. Hopping systems are usually designed Operating systems are typically designed for a particular type of device. For example, operating systems used for professional computers are typically referred to as personal operating systems. Also called desktop operating systems. And they are designed to be installed on a single computer. In contrast, server operating systems, also called network operating systems, are designed to be installed on a network server to grant multiple users access to a web network and its resources. Each computer on a, on a network has its own personal res operating systems installed, just as with a standalone computer, and the operating system controls the activity of on the computer, while the server operating system controls access to network resources. Computers on a network may also need special client software to access the network and other issues requests in the, to the server. Server operating systems are typically used by large networks, such as the one such as those found in business and schools. Home ne networks don't require the server operating system, though some home networks, network devices such as a media server or a NAS, come to, with networking software designed for that device. For both large and small network Networks, networks, resources, such as a shared network, hard drive, or printer, generally look like local non-network resources to any device that is connected to the web network. For example, you will see a network hard drive listen, listed with its own identifying letter, such as F and G, along with the drives located on your computer. And you will see a network a pick printer included in your list of available printers whenever you open a print dialog box. If you do not log onto the network or if the network is down, you cannot access network resources such as to launch a program located on the network server, save the inter save a document to a network hard drive, print using a shared printer, or access the limit the internet via a shared network connection. However, you can still work locally on the on that computer, just as you would on a standalone computer. An overview of how uh, to, uh, an overview of how a typical personal operating system and server operating system interact on a business computer network is shown in blah. In addition to personal operating systems and Server operating systems. There are mobile device, mobile operating systems, and that systems that are designed to be used with smartphones and other mobile devices, and embedded operating systems that are built into consumer kiosks, cash registers, cars, consumers, electronics, and other devices. Specific reasons for operating systems are covered later in this chapter. Most operating systems today are operated are designed to be used with specific types of processors, such as a mobile desktop or server compress processors, as well as a specific number of processors. In addition, most operating systems are designed for either 32-bit or 62-bit computers. Many operating systems have a custom version of it of each, because 64-bit processors can process up to twice as much as their twice as much data per clock cycle as 32-bit processors, depending on the extent of what to what which of the applications being used sports, supports 64-bit processing and can address more than 4 gigabytes of RAM. Using a 64-bit operating system with 4-bit computer with a 4-bit computer can help a speed help to speed up processing. Operating systems that support 64-bit CPUs often include other chemical improvements. 
that a lot that together may result in a more efficient operating system and and consequently faster operation details about windows os os x linux and other operating systems are discussed shortly As new technologies or trends, such as the new CPU characteristics or a new type of bus, virtualization, mobility, and wearable computers, security concerns, power consumption concerns, tough touch and ge- touch and gesture input, and the move to cloud software emerge, operating systems must be updated or new operating systems develop in order to support those new technologies to, or trends. For example, the latest version of Windows adds, adds support for touch and pen input, which is commonly used today. The new operating systems are being developed to, to wearable and smart applications. On the other hand, as tech uh, technology become obsolete, operating system manufacturers need to decide when support for wearable appliances. On the other hand, technologies become a lot of decide support technologies. Wait. The technology become obsolete. Operating system manufacturers need to decide to support decide when support for those technologies will ce- cease. Alternatively, hardware hardware manufacturers are need also need to respond to new technologies introduced by operating systems. For instance, because the latest version of Windows and OS X support multi-touch input, a flurry of new new devices that have touched, that have screen touch, that have touch screen that support gesture input have been uh, introduced. For a look at one new product resulting in the firm speech in a trend of speech recognition, Amazon Echo. See the trend box. No. During the 1980s, oh, I, I pressed bleh. operating systems for personal computers and servers. As previously discussed, many operating systems today are designed for specific types of devices. The operating systems most commonly used with personal computers and servers are discussed next. Operating systems for mobile devices and larger computers are discussed later in this chapter. DOS. <gasps> DDoS? Don't DDoS anybody. During the 1980s and early 1990s, DOS, a disk operating system, was the dominant operating system for microcomputers. DOS traditionally used a common line interface, although later versions of DOS support a menu-driven interface. There were two two primary forms of DOS, PC-DOS and MS-DOS. PC-DOS was created originally for IBM PCs and is owned by IBM, whereas MS-DOS is created for use with IBM compatible PCs. Both versions were originally developed by Microsoft Corporation, but neither version is updated any longer. DOS is considered obsolete today because it does not utilize the graphical user use a, utilize a graphical user interface and does not support modern pro- pro- processors and processor techniques. However, computers running the Windows operating system can still execute DOS commands via the camera prompt, the command prompt window as shown in figure below. DOS commands can be used to quickly determine 
specific information or perform tasks such as the IP config command used to display your computer's IP address or the ping command used to check your internet connection. Checking. Yeah, we're good. Windows. <gasps> Windows. Microsoft Windows has been the mo the pro the predominant personal operating system for many years and still holds about ninety percent ninety percent of the market. There have been many different versions of Windows over the years. The next few sections chronicle the main. I am. I am hiccuping so. Ah. <laughs> the main developments of this operating system. <laughs> I'm not going to stop hiccuping. Please stop. Microsoft created the original version of Windows, Windows 1.0, in 1985 in an effort to meet the needs of user fr users frustrated by having to learn and use DOS commands. Windows 1.0 through Windows 3.x X stands for the version number of the software, such as Windows 3.0, 3.1, or 3.11. There were not, however, fully fledged operating systems. Instead, they were operating environments for the DOS operating system. With, that is, graphical shells that operated around the DOS operating system and were designed to make DOS easier to use. In 1994, Microsoft announced that all versions of Windows after 3.1 would be full-fledged operating systems instead of just operating environments. The next three versions of Windows designed for personal computers were Windows 95, Windows 98, and Windows Me, Millennium ed Edition. Windows NT, New Technologies, was the first 32-bit version of Windows designed for high-end workstations and servers. It was built with the gr from the ground up using a different kernel than the other version of Windows and was eventually replaced by Windows 2000. Windows XP replaced both Windows 2000 for business use and Windows Me for home use. Although this processing throughout this process Throughout this progression of Windows release, support for new hardware such as DVD drives and USB drives, networks, networking the internet, multimedia applications, and voice and pen input were included. <laughs> support for all of these early versions of Windows, Windows has been discontinued. I hear so much about like old Win- not all about, but like some people like how uh people were like you know i know you don't want windows 11 but like what's the difference you had to upgrade you had to upgrade to them eventually and everybody's like yeah i had to upgrade not by choice though windows vista replaced windows xp one of the most obvious initial changes in windows vista is the arrow interface a visual graphical user interface that uses transparent windows and dynamic elements Windows Vista also introduced the sidebar feature that contained gadgets, small applications that are used to perform a variety of tasks such as displaying weather information, a calendar, and news headlines. Other features of new other features new to Vista included the Windows Media Center and Windows Speech Recognition. Support for Windows Vista is scheduled to end in 2017. Windows 7 was released next. It required less memory and processing power than pro previous versions of Windows, and it was designed to start up and respond faster than Vista, so it could run well on netbook and tablets. So Windows 7 also j added jump list that show your most recent documents, live thumbnails of open programs that can be used, that can be displayed by pointing to the taskbar buttons, and virtual folders called libraries that display together in one location the files that a user that the user specifies regardless of where those files are physically located on the hard drive in addition windows 7 included a home group feature for improved window for improved home networking one click wi-fi connection support for multi-touch voice and pen input and improved accessory programs 
such as a more versatile calculator and a print program that uses Win ribbon interface found in recent versions of Microsoft Office. Windows 8 is was released in 2012. According to Microsoft, it is a reimagining of Windows from the chip to the interface. It is designed to be used with a wide range of devices, from smartphones to desktop computers, as well as with or without a keyboard or mouse because it supports multi-touch input. The new Windows 8 start screen, the initial screen you see when you boot your computer, though computer, though if you have a password, you'll see the lock screen until you enter your password, uses tiles to represent apps, folders, websites, and more. Tiles are selected with the mo with the mouse with the mouse or finger to launch the corresponding content. Windows 8 apps run full screen, conventional programs run inside Windows that can be sized as a previous version, as in previous versions of Windows, such as Windows. Some tiles are live tiles, which show up to date information and notifications, such as social media activity, news, weather, and new email messages. Other conventional programs and, uh, and apps from the Windows Store are represented by tiles. Users can pin and unpin apps too, and from the start screen, as well as rearrange the new new group, the name groups of tiles. Although you launch most programs via the start screen, users can work with the more traditional Windows desktop if they prefer. To display the desktop from the start screen, click the desktop tile to return to the start screen. Press the window key on the keyboard. Click the bottom left corner of the screen to use the start charm. Discuss shortly the Windows 8 desktop is similar to the desktop in previous versions of Windows. Wait, keyboard. Click the bo click the bottom left corner of the screen or use the start charm. Discuss shortly the Windows. The Windows 8 desktop is similar to the desktop in previous versions of Windows with the taskbar, task buttons, and windows. Not gonna lie, Windows 11 is pretty sleek. I'm not sure if I want to upgrade immediately though. Have to. They already announced that they're gonna discontinue Windows 10. <sighs> Another new feature of Windows 8 is charms. The charms bar, referred again to blah, is displayed at, by pointing at the upper and lower or lower right corner of the screen or by swiping in from the right edge of the screen. The search charm allows you to research your computers, the web, and the Windows Store. The share, the share charm allows you to send links, photos, and other contents to your friends. The start charm allow, takes you to the start screen, or if you are on the start screen, it takes you to your last app. The device charm helps you manage the devices that are connected to the computer. The settings charm is used to configure settings such as a network and speaker settings, speaker volume, and to shut down your PC. To easily launch other system management programs, point to the lower left corner of the screen to display the start screen preview and the right and then right click. In addition to desktop versions of Windows 8 and earlier versions of Windows that are designed for personal computers, there are server versions of Windows. For example, the various versions of Windows servers and Windows Home server server are used with servers and pre-installed and pre-installed on home device server devices designed to provide services for home network respectively windows 10 the latest version of windows what happened to windows 9 what happened to windows 9 <laughs> what is up with like companies that skip they skip 9 for some reason it's like we gotta go jump straight to 10 windows windows did it iphone did it i don't get it there was no iphone 9 9 is a cursed number apparently The most significant change, what is it? The latest version of Windows is Windows 10. 
Windows 10. The most significant change from previous versions of Windows is that Windows 10 is a universal operating system that will run on any device, from smartphones to tablets to personal networks to servers. Consequently, Windows 10 replaced all previous versions of Windows. The look, the look and features of Windows 10 are consistent regardless of the device used, although the experience is automatically adjusted to be optimized for each device and screen size, such as working with a keyboard and mouse when a notebook is used, or working with pen and, pen and touch when a, pa when a tablet is used. In addition, app development for Windows 10 can run on any device that, is, that has Windows 10 installed. Windows 10 looks similar to Windows 8, however some features have been adjusted to make them work better with both touch devices and conventional computers. For example, the start menu contains a menu of shortcuts, as well as tiles like those found on the Windows 8 start screen that can be used to launch applications, folders, websites, and more as shown in figure blah. In addition, app downloaded, apps downloaded from the Windows Store run in a sizable window, run a sizable window instead of full screen as in as in Windows 8. One discontinued feature is Windows 8 is Windows 8 charm bar. Dun, 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 dun. Na 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 OS X? Nah, not yet. One new feature of Windows 10 is Task View, which enables each user to create personalized virtual desktops. Each virtual desktop includes the program the user specifies, such as programs used for work in one desktop and programs used for gaming and other personal activities in another desktop. The user can switch between the desktop as as needed. Windows 10 also includes a new web browser called Edge that replaces Internet Explorer and a new virtual assistant called Cortana. Available via the taskbar search bar, Cortana. Windows 10 is being offered as a free upgrade for one year for one year for all Windows 7 and 8 users. As a result, it is expected that individuals and businesses will transition to Windows 10 much faster than they have upgraded to a new version of Windows in the past. This aged so well. This aged so well. OS X. The proprietary operating system for Mac computers made by Apple Corporation was Mac OS. It was based on the U U on the UNIX operating system, discussed shortly, and originally set the standard for graphical user interfaces. Many of today's operating systems follow the trend that Mac OS started and in fact use GUIs that highly resemble the ones used with Mac OS. Starting with version 10 of Mac OS, the operating system it, our, the operating system was renamed Mac o, Mac was renamed OS X and includes a release name instead of a release number such as Mac X L Capitan or and Mac OS X, Mac OS X Yosemite, shown in blah, similar to Windows Mac S, Mac wait no Mac, similar to Windows OS X, supports multi-threading, multitasking, multi-processing, and 64-bit processors, and has a high level of multimedia functions and connectivity. It include and connectivity. It includes the Safari web browser and a dock, which you can use to launch programs and open frequently used files and folders. New features include a cleaner look and a new notification center that displays and lets you interact with notifications, such as, in e such as emails, messages, and calendar items. In addition, with the new continuity feature, you can place iPhone calls or send and receive text via your Mac. 
You can also switch from one device to another and continue your work seamlessly, as long as the two devices are within range. And you can sync all your devices. And you can sync all your devices, all your Apple devices via iCloud. The menu bar at the top of the OS X desktop contains icons that can be used to open the Apple menu, used to access a variety of tools. App, ma app menus containing items from the application currently in use, status menus used to view a variety of information, spotlight used to search your computer, and a notification center. OS X server of the ser is the server version of OS X. <sighs> UNIX was originally developed in the, in the late 1960s at AT&T Bell, Lab Bell Laboratories as an operating system for mid-range servers. UNIX is a multi-user, multitasking operating system, com system. Computer systems ranging from microcomputers to mainframe. Mainframes can run UNIX and it can support a variety of devices from different manufacturers. This flexibility use flexibility gives UNIX an advantage over competing operating systems in some situations. However, UNIX is more expensive, requires a higher level of technical knowledge, and tends to be harder to install, maintain, and upgrade than most other commonly used operating systems. There are many versions of UNIX available, as well as many other operating systems that are based on UNIX. These operating systems, such as OX, OSX, are sometimes referred to as U UNIX flavors. In fact, the term UNIX was initially referred to the original UNIX operating system, has evolved to refer today to a group of similar operating systems based on UNIX. Many UNIX flavors are not compatible with each other, which creates some problems when a program written for one UNIX computer system is moved to another computer system running on a different flavor of UNIX. To avoid this, incom this com incompatibility problem, the open, group, the open group open source consortium has overseen the development of the single UNIX specification, a standard a standardized programming environment for UNIX applications and let's see blah, 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 blah. program applications and certifies UNIX operating systems if they conform to the single UNIX specification both personal and server versions of UNIX based operating systems are available. <laughs> Linux is an operating system developed by Linus Torvald in 1991 when he was a student in U at the University of Helsinki in Finland. Let's see. The operating system resembles UNIX, but was developed independently from it. Linux, Linux it was released to the public as open source software. That is, a program whose co source code is available to the public and can be modified to improve it or to customize it to a particular application, as discussed in more detail in Chapter 6. Over the years, the number of Linux users has grown and volunteer programmers from all over the world have collaborated to improve it, sharing their modified code with others over the internet. Al internet. Although Linux originally used a command line interface, most recent versions of Linux programs use a graphical user interface and operate similarly to other desktop operating systems, such as Windows and OS X. For, example, for instance, the version of Linux shown in Figure Blah Ubuntu 
Ubuntu has icons, menus, windows, and an app dock, and an app dock. Linux is widely available as a free download via the internet. Companies are also permitted to customize Linux and sell it, it, it as a retail product. Commercial Linux distribution comes with maintenance and support materials, something that many of the free versions do not offer, making the commercial versions more, more attractive for com corporate users. Over the years, Linux has become a widely accepted operating system with strong support from mainstream companies such as IBM, NVIDIA, HP, and Dell. Versions of Linux are available for a wide variety of devices, for personal computers to servers to mobile devices and smart TVs. One reason inv individuals and organizations are switching to Linux and other open source software is cost. Typically using the Linux operating system and a free or low cost office suite, web browser and email program can save several hundreds of dollars per computer. Other reasons include the ability to come out to customize the user interface and to directly control the w computer much more than is possible with Windows and OS X. In addition, Linux computers can run faster than Windows and OS X due to Linux much lower hardware requirements. For example, the, uh, the Ubuntu, Ubuntu version of Linux shown in figure blah requires only a 512 megabytes of RAM and 5 gigabytes of hard drive space versus the 1 gigabyte of RAM and 16 gigabyte of hard drive space required for recent versions of Windows. Hmm. Chrome OS is the first cloud operating system, that is, an operating system designed for devices that will be used entirely online. Chrome OS is essentially the Chrome website brow the Chrome web browser redesigned to run, an run a computer in addition to accessing web resources. It replaces in 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 traditional desktop operating systems like Windows, but it is currently only available pre-installed on, on Chrome devices, such as Chromebooks. Do, do, do. Operating systems for mobile devices. While notebook, hybrid notebook, tablets, and other portable personal computers typically use the same operating systems as a desktop computer, as desktop computers, smartphones, tablets, and other mobile devices usually use mobile operating systems, either mobile versions of personal operating systems such as Windows or Linux, or special operating systems such as Android or Apple iOS that are designed specifically for mobile devices. There are also embedded operating systems designed to be used by everyone, everyday objects, such as home appliances, gaming consoles, digital cameras, e-readers, digital photo frames, as photo frames, ATMs, toys, watches, GPS systems, home med medical devices, voting terminals, and cars. For a look at some current and emerging smart cars features, see technology in Ubox. No. Most users select a smartphone by considering the wireless provider, hardware, and features associated with the smartphone. However, users should also consider the operating system used with the smartphone or other device because it determines some of the capabilities of the device, the interface used, and the applications that can run on that device. The operating systems most commonly used uh, used with mobile devices today are discussed next. Whew. As previously mentioned, Windows 10 is designed to work on smartphones, tablets, and other mobile devices in addition to personal computers. While the mobile while the display is smaller on a smartphone or tablet than a than a desktop, Windows on a mobile device uses the same kernel, user interface, and other features as a desktop installation. One new feature, dubbed Core Continuum, Continuum, 
allows allows Windows to provide the most appropriate interface, such as supporting keyboard and mouse input when you when your device is attached to a keyboard, and using a touchscreen interface when it is not. It even enables some smartphones to function as a Windows 10 PC when the smartphone is connected to an inter- internal mono- monitor, a mouse, and a keyboard via a wired or wireless connection. Windows 10, Windows 10, as shown in blah, re- places older. Windows 10 replaces older mobile devices of, fi- of Windows, including Windows Phone 8 and Windows RT, as well as older embedded versions of Windows. Android is a Linux-based operating system developed by the Open Headset Alliance, a group that includes Google and more than 30 technology more than 30 technology and mobile companies. The most widely used mobile operating system in the United States, Android was built from the ground up with current mobile device capabilities in mind which enables you enables developers to create mobile applications that take full advantage of all the features a mobile device has to offer. It is open it is an open platform. So anybody can download and use Android. Although hardware manufacturers must adhere to certain specifications in order to call Android in order to be called Android compatible. The current version of Android is Android 0.6 as no as also known as Marshmallow. Similar to previous versions of Android, Android Marshmallow supports multi-touch input and has a variety of built-in Google apps, such as the Chrome Webbook, Gmail, and the Google Now Virtual Assistant, with more than 1 million additional apps available via the Google Play Store. It also includes the Android Device Manager to help users locate, lock, and remotely wipe a lost or stolen Android phone support the Android Play for mobile purchases, and the ability to unlock the phone via a PIN, password pattern, or face recognition. One feature, one feature new to Marshmallow is the ability to access Google Now from any screen, called Google on Tap. In addition to being used with Android smartphones and tablets, there are versions of Android designs for other devices such as Android Wears, such as Android Wear for wearables, to Android TV for smart TVs and Android Auto for cars. <sighs> iOS. iOS. The iOS operating system designed for Apple de- mobile devices such as the iPhone and iPad, the iOS is the iOS. This operating system is based on Apple's OS X operating system supports multi-touch input and has a variety of built-in apps with more than 1 million additional apps available via the App Store. The current version of OS X is the I- is iOS 9. In adi- it, it, well, it includes Touch ID and Apple Pay for some for secure purchases the Safari web browser, and the Siri virtual assistant that lets users perform search, place calls, and perform other tasks via voice commands, FaceTime for video calls, and iCloud for online storage. It also includes a Find My Phone, Find My iPhone app to help users locate, lock, and remotely wipe a lost or stolen iPhone, as well as support for Apple Watch. The embedded operating system used with the Apple Watch is watchOS. The current version is watchOS 2. TVOS is the new embedded operating system for Apple TV. Blackberry OS and Blackberry Playboy Playbook OS. I'm not gonna lie, Blackberry. I always liked Blackberries. It's been so long. Blackberry OS is the operating system designed for Blackberry devices. It supports multitasking and, like other mobile mobile operating systems, it includes email and web browsing support, music management, video recording, calendar tools, and more. The latest version of BlackBerry, Black, the latest version is BlackBerry 10 OS. BlackBerry tablet operating system is BlackBerry Playboy OS, Playboy, 
<laughs> BlackBerry Playbook OS. There's a wide range of software available for BlackBerry devices, from business and syncing software to games and other apps available through BlackBerry World. In addition to Android and iOS, there are other Linux-based mobile operating systems used with mobile devices today. For instance, Ubuntu. Ubuntu, Ubuntu has versions available for phones and tablets, and HP recently made its WebOS product as an open source program. Two new Linux-based mobile operating systems are Firefox OS and Tizen. Firefox OS is developed by Ma. Firefox OS was developed by Mozilla and cre and includes a customizable home screen and a number of built-in apps, including the Firefox web browser. With additional web with additional apps available via the Firefox marketplace in a Mar marketplace. In addition to being used with smartphones, Firefox OS is used uh, with some tablets and smart TVs. Tizen is also used with a variety of devices including smartphones, wearables, tablets, and smart TVs. For a look at another product increasingly used in Linux-based operating systems, system drones, see the inside of the industry box. No. No. Whew. Operating systems for larger computers. Large larger computers such as a high end such as high end servers, mainframes, and supercomputers sometimes use operating systems designed solely for the type of system. For instance, IBM's Z slash OS is designed for IBM mainframes. In addition, many servers and main mainframes today run conventional operating systems such as Windows, UNIX, and Linux. Linux is particular is Linux in particular is increasingly being used with both mainframes and supercomputers. Larger computers may also use a customized operating system based on a conventional operating system. For instance, many IBM mainframes and Cray supercomputers use versions of UNIX developed specifically for those computers. Sorry, I had to close something real quick. Double check it one more time. Yay. A utility program is a software program that performs a specific task, usually related to managing or maintaining a computer system. Many utility programs, such as programs for finding files, diagnosing and repairing system problems, cleaning up a hard drive, viewing images, Playing multimedia files and backing up files are built into operating systems. There are also many standalone utility programs available as an alternative, as an alternative to the operating systems of utility programs, or to provide additional utility programs not built into the operating system being used. Standalone utility programs are often available in a suite in a suite or re of related programs such as a collection of maintaining maintenance programs or security programs programs some of the most commonly used integrated and standalone util uti yeah, utility programs are discussed next Whew. file management programs allow you to perform file management tasks such as looking to see which files are stored on a storage medium, as well as copying, moving, deleting, and renaming fi folders and files. The Files Management Program incorporated into new re new versions of Windows in File Explorer, previously previous version of Windows, used Windows Explorer. Some common files management tasks using that this program are summarized next. Looking at the folders and files stored on the computer, once a file management operating management program is open, you can look at the file folders and files stored on your computer. For instance, you can do the following in File Explorer. 
uh, to see the folder and file stored in the hard drive, the USB, blah, 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 blah. Suffer through it. To see the folders and files stored on your hard drive, USB flash drive, or any other storage medium, click the appropriate letter. Yeah, I ain't reading this. Copying moving files and folders. To copy and move a file or folder using a file management program such as File Explorer, you first need to navigate to the drive and folder where the item is located and then select and desire the desired file or folder. Next, issue either the copy command or the cut command and using the home tab to copy or move the selected item. <sighs> I gotta read. <laughs> Using the home tab to copy or move the selected item to the clipboard, a temporary location used to copy items, you can you then use to navigate to the drive folder used, you want a file to go, use the paste command to copy. Remove the item to that location you can copy. Remove the one file at the time, we'll hold the shift key down and click on the first and then last file to select group adjacent. Oh my gosh. Hold the control key down, not clicking. I'm skipping two of these paragraphs. I'm sorry, I, I can't. I can't. You're not gonna tell me how I should learn how to copy and paste. It's copy, paste. That's it. Search tools. As the, as the amount of email, photo, documents, and other important data individuals store on their computers continues to grow, search tools, utility programs that search for documents and other files as a user, uh, on a user's hard drives are becoming more important. Search tools are often integrated into file management programs that f programs and they are highly improved in recent and they have pro and they are highly improved in recent versions of some operating systems such as OS X and Windows. There are also a number of third-party search tools available. Search tools typically are used to find files located somewhere on the specific storage medi storage medium that meet specific criteria such as being in a certain folder, be including certain characters in the file name, be being of a particular type, a song, digital photo, or spreadsheet, for instance, and, and or having a particular date associated with the file. If a document has been manually or automatically assigned metadata tags, information about the file, such as, an, such as author, artist, or keyword, some search programs can search by those tags as well. <laughs> in Windows, for instance, users can use the search box located in the upper right corner of the File Explorer window. Refer again blah, for, to search for files and folders in the current location that match the keyword where it's entered into the search box. You can also use the search box on the taskbar, start type search item to display and match content. The default search is to search for apps, documents, and computers as well. The taskbar search box also doubles as an interface for the Cortana virtual assistant, so you can use the Cortana tradition, in addition to using it for additional search. I know how to use this, I know how to do this. Diagnostic Disk Management Programs. Diagnostic programs evaluate your system looking for problems and making com recommendations for fixing any errors that are discovered. Disk management programs diagnose and repair problems related to your, har your hard drive. Diagnostics and disk management utilities built into the Windows operating system 
include programs to check your hard drive for errors, as well as programs to optimize your hard drive. By rearranging the data on the hard drive, so all files are stored on in contagious locations, called disk defragmentation. So it works more efficiently. Third-party utility programs can reform, perform these and other related tasks, tasks as well. Uninstall and clean up utilities. As programs are used, temporary data is often created. When programs are uninstalled, removed from the hard drive, this data and other remnants of that date of the program it can be left behind on the hard drive or in system files unless an uninstalled utility is used. If the user removes programs by deleting the program folder, which is not the recommended method for removing programs, the extraneous data is left behind, using up valuable disk space and sometimes slowing down the computer. Uninstall utilities removes the programs along with related extraneous data, such as references to other programs in your system files, some uninstalled capabilities are files. Some uninstall capabilities are built into most operating systems. Often an uninstall option is also included in a program's folder when that program is originally un in installed. Cleanup utilities are designed to delete temporary files, such as deleted files, still in the recycling bin, temporary file, internet files, temporary installations files, and so forth. In order to free up disk space, some specialty cleanup programs called registry cleaners are designed to locate unnecessary information in the Windows registry and other program files, such as from such as from uninstalled programs and deleting it, and delete it, making your pro computer run more efficiently. File compression software. File compression. S file compression. Wait, where did the software come from? <laughs> file compression programs reduce the size of files so they take up less storage space on a on a storage medium or can be transmitted faster over the internet. The most common format for user compressed files in the Windows environment is the zip or zip X file format, which is created by file compre compression programs such as WinZip and the free 7-zip program, as well as the file compressions feature built into recent versions of Windows. Mac users typically use stuff, stuff it, stuff it, which creates files in the SIT or SITX format or similar program or a similar program. Although many file compression programs can open files compressed with other programs. A file compression program is required to both compress zip and decompress unzip files unless the zip file is made executable. Executable. Executable zip files have the ex extension .exe and decompress automatically when they are opened, even if the appropriate file compression program is not installed on the re recipient's computer. File compression programs can compress either a single file or a group of files into the single compressed file. When multiple files are compressed, they are separated back into individual files when the file is decompressed. Some file compression programs can also encrypt your unzip files so that a password is needed to unzip them. Encryption is discussed in detail in Chapter 9. Virtually every computer veteran will, learn, will warn you that sooner or later, you will lose some critical files. Is that true, Music Boy? Will I lose some critical files? You're a computer veteran. More than me. <laughs> will I lose my computer data? My data data? <laughs> this could happen due to a power outage. If a file you are working on has, yet, has not yet been saved, a hardware failure, such as if your computer or hard drive stops functioning, a major disaster, such as a fire that destroys your computer, or user errors, such as accidentally deleting or overwriting a file. Creating a backup means making a duplicate copy of important files so that when a problem occurs, you can restore those files using the, using the backup copy to avoid data loss. 
Performing a backup can include backing up an entire computer so that so it can be stored at a later date if needed. Backing up all data files in order to restore them in case the computer is lost or damaged, or backing up a Backing up only select files, selected files to make you sure you can you have a clean copy of each file if the original is accidentally lost or destroyed. Depending on its size, backup data can be placed on a recordable or rewritable disc, DVD disc, an extent external hard drive. I lost my place. A USB flash drive or virtually any other storage medium. <sighs> to protect against fires and other natural disasters, backup media should be stored in a different physical location than your computer or inside a fire resistant safe. Creating a backup is installed is illustrated in fee in blah. It is critical for a business to have backup procedures in place that back up all data on a frequent, regular basis, such as every night. A rotating collection of backup media should be used so it is possible to go back beyond the previous day's backup if needed. While individuals tend to back up in a less formal manner, personal backups are becoming increasingly necessary as the amount of important information that users are stored users store digitally, such as home movies, music, digital photos, and tax returns grows. Personal backups can be as simple as copying important documents to a USB flash drive or uploading them to a cloud storage service storage site or as comprehensive as backing up the entire contents of your computer. You can perform backups by manually copying the files using your file management program, but there are backup, but there are backup utility programs, both standalone and built into operating systems that make the backup process easier, such as the file history program used in recent versions of Windows that back up your files into a to an external drive, and the Carbonite Cloud Backup program, and the Carbonite Cloud Backup program that back up your data continuously on the cloud. One advantage of cloud backup program is that programs is that your files can be accessed with any web web enabled device. However, in either in either case, you can recover your data using the backup if the original are lost, corrupted or accidentally deleted. Antivirus, spyware, anti-spyware, firewalls, and other security programs. Mm -hmm. A computer virus is a program is a software program that is designed to cause damage to a pow to a computer or perform some other malicious act. And spyware is a software program installed installed without the user's knowledge that secretly collects information and sends it to your out to an outside party via the 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 user's internet connection. Other security concerns today include phishing scams, phishing schemes that try to trick users into supplying personal information that can be used for credit card fraud, identity theft, and other criminal acts. Because of these threats, it is critical that all computer users today protect themselves and their computers. There are many security programs available, such as antivirus programs and anti-spyware programs that protect against malicious software being installed on your computer, and firewall programs that protect against someone accessing your computer via the internet or a wireless connection. Increasingly, operating systems are including security software integrated into the operating system. For instance, recent versions of Windows include a variety of security utilities, such as Windows Defender and Windows Smart Screen, to protect against viruses, and Windows Firewall, shown in blah, to protect against intrusions. Because networks and internet security is such an important topic today, chapter 9 is dedicated to this topic. The future of operating systems. Whew. The future configuration of operating systems is anyone's guess, but it is expected that they will continue to become more user-friendly and eventually be driven primarily by a voice, touch, and or gesture interface. 
Operating systems are also likely to continue to become more stable and self-healing, repairing or restoring system files as needed in addition to in addition as needed. In addition, they are expected to continue to include security and technological improvements as they become available. Improvements will almost certainly continue to be made in a, in the areas of synchronizing and coordinating data and activities among your person a person's various computing devices such as his or her personal computer, smartphone, and wearable devices. Desktops and mobile, device, mobile operating systems will also likely continue on cover, con, to converge into a single operating system as those devices continue to, on, continue to converge. In addition, with the pervasiveness of the internet, operating systems in the future may be used primarily to access software available through the internet or other, so, or other networks included in, instead of accessing software on the local computer Whew. way shorter than last time you underestimate that last time was like 37 38 pages yesterday February quickly before we started stream this was like 20 I counted 27 pages Whew. So at least that's finished. We'll probably read chapter six tomorrow. And chapter six, sadly, is not the last chapter, but it will be the last chapter for the week. Woo! How many pages do I dare read the pages of chapter, how many pages there are for chapter six? Do I, do I try? We got one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, 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 33. 30. At least one of them. All right. So that's done. <sighs> so, if there's anybody out there, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> We've already finished up even sooner, thankfully, sooner than we usually do. So, I'm not sure. I don't know. <gasps> oh yeah, that's right. I definitely can talk about that. Now we're finally done with that. I can finally talk and like just talk about stuff. So, I'm not sure if I'll be able to make it this time. But what I really want to do, what I really, really, really want to do is, um, I tweeted about it earlier, but I, um, came up with, well, I'm still sketching it out, but I'm not sure, but I'm planning on possibly ending, entering the upcoming, win the, uh, Miku, the Winter Miku Contest. I really want to try. I want to. I want to. I want to. I'm not sure if I'll win. But it's a design I want to try. I'm not sure if I'll do it on stream because I know some people, you know, some people. They steal from people, unfortunately. But, 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 but. I still want to at least try. So there's that. <laughs> what is it? So the theme for this for this uh, year is me. It's for Winter Miku, um, 2024. Um. Uh, 
Bum 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 bum. I forgot what I was saying. So the theme for Winter Miku this year is a uh, feast, and like I've already got, we've already got some stiff competition. We've got shrimp Miku, shrimp chef Miku who's already making the rounds. I don't doubt that that won't. That's gonna probably at least make it to the finals, at least at the very least, because people are already, because it was like crazy popular, like already. But also the fact that like I gotta like figure out how to create account, create an account on Pipro. <laughs> There's so much stuff you got to plan. <sighs> but oh well. <laughs> but I'm excited. I want to try. I want to at least try a little bit. It'll be my first Miku competition. But I still want to try. I want to do kind of a, some people are doing, I know some people are doing, some people are doing desserts, some people are doing regular foods. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet-ish. I have a design concept, vague design concept in mind. Mine usually, mine's going to revolve around desserts. I'm going to do a dessert theme because I just want to. It'll... It's like a dessert fruit type of theme. Like I said, I'm not sure if I'll do it on here, but um, it's something I still want to try. It's something I still want to try. My only thing that I would say is kind of uh, stumping me a little bit is the fact that I'm not sure if I want to do an outfit for the little bunny because I'm not sure how to do it. I've gotten, I, I've got an idea. I have an idea of what I want the little bunny, Yukine. I have an idea of what I want to do, of what I want to do, but I'm not sure. Hmm. No, but that, other than that, yeah. What else? What else? We might be all... On the one hand, I want to draw, but on the other hand... Ugh. Mmm. The other project. The only reason why... What is it? The deadline's like next... Ugh. The deadline is like in March. Ugh, I gotta make time. Ugh. <laughs> What else? Mm, maybe, 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 maybe. I wanted to see if I can get a quick sketch in, but I highly doubt I can get a quick sketch in in an hour. Maybe. <laughs> oh yeah. But other than that, I've been like, it's been pretty chill. It's been pretty chill. We've been getting through these assignments one by one. <sighs> you guys have no idea. I actually really appreciate the fact that some of you guys come here and listen to me read a freaking textbook, especially since these textbooks take forever. <sighs> they take forever. They take freaking forever. So it's really hard for me to read it. Even like earlier when I tried reading it by myself, it's like super hard to do because it's so freaking long. And so I just use the time to do this. We're probably gonna like remember this. What is it? Our humble beginnings of the time where during her college years, she read her homework textbook to us and told us about printers. Printers, everybody. Printers. Beautiful. Am I right, everybody? Beautiful. <laughs> uh. 
たな。So many cool people doing cool stuff. Uh, and here I am. <laughs> eh, well, it's better than nothing. I'd rather do that than take another hiatus. The only thing I would say is difficult. What is it? We're eventually going to start doing spreadsheets and stuff, and that's going to drive me up the wall. I finally, thankfully, have someone who can like, teach me, but like, at the same time, it's like, ugh. It's already annoying my head. <laughs> Dang. 24 hours in, and Kiko Ohana has been kicked out. Dang. For real, for real. Yes, definitely. Compared to Kiko Ohana 1, Kiko Ohana 2 is kind of meh. You guys are like, what? Uh, so. The key, what is it? The Kiko subreddit currently is having like one of those elimination rounds. And, um. And so, uh, like, I'm like, I'm like voting Kiko Ohana. I'm like, what is it? Like, you got the Kiko albums, the, uh, what is it? So you got the normal Kiko Omiku albums, but then there's also Whereabouts of the Living Souls with featuring him and Siku, and then the Kiko Ohana albums, which feature Kikuo and Hanatan. And so a couple of the albums got like kicked off. Some albums like were robbed in the beginning, some were just flat out robbed in the beginning because there is no way Kiko. What is it? There's no, there was no reason Kiko Omiku, Kiko Omiku 2 got kicked out before Kiko Omiku 1. And Kiko Omiku 1 is like so plain compared to Kiko Omiku 2. <laughs> Kiko Omiku 2, yeah. And I can say the same thing for the Kiko World albums as well. The Kiko World albums too. Kiko, Kiko World 1 should have. Been kicked off before Kiko World 2 and 3. Just saying. So now the only ones left are Kiko Miku 4, Hana. What is it? It seems like、uh, Hanatan. Kiko, Kiko Hana 2 is like going to be like the next one kicked off. But、um, it seems that the only survivors are Kiko Miku 3, Kiko Miku 4, Kiko Miku 5, Kiko Miku 6, and Whereabouts of the Living Souls. So that's, an inter- that's gonna be an interesting thing. <laughs> I don't know why. I always like that, like, like, dumb, you know, like that dumb dialogue like, you sometimes hear, and it's like, dang. <laughs> Follow l a w Falala. Hmm. Reddit is a cesspit. But when you find a good community, you find a good community. I feel like my opinions have like, slightly changed about the Otome Isekai subreddit. They, fe- they, see- they look- they look- they're doing a lot better. They're doing a lot better than before. Definitely a lot better than before. I think the moderators did a good job cleaning up. They did a lot of cleaning up. It was good. <laughs> there's a whole. I literally just found out. Like just now, there's a whole subreddit. Whew. Dedicated to hating Caillou. No, 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 no. Somebody, re- somebody,、uh, somebody talked about what is it? Apparently, they rebooted Kai, and it's like, it ruined, someone responded, it ruined my life. As soon as it was announced, things started going wrong. First, I stubbed all my toes and hit my shin. Then, I spilled my water. My shirt, wrist got wet. My cereal got soggy instantly, and all my fruit rotted. My wife left me and took the kids and went bankrupt, and, uh, you know, $200,000 of debt. 
my verb, my car broke down, and my cat died. I'm being sued by EA, and Rockstar wants me dead. I have terminal brain cancer and bone cancer. My entire life has been uprooted ever since this was announced. My house was destroyed, and I went bald. I don't care about you, Caillou. You've ruined my life. <laughs> Caillou has ruined everything. But Caillou grows up to be the One Punch Man, so he redeems himself. Okay, <laughs> can we talk about something, though? The Astro Boy subreddit. Not Astro Boy subreddit. I meant Astro Boy just in general. Can we talk about that? Like, what I mean is, like, uh, they were talking- There was, like, a reboot that was announced, like, well, so many years ago. And then it was just never brought back up again. Ooh. Someone did a Paper Mario birthday. Nice. Paper Mario birthday. Definitely impressive. Definitely impressive. People who go out of their way to like, like, people who go out of their way to like do stuff for their kids are so like, they're so sweet. It's always nice seeing like a parent like go above and beyond. <laughs> Siku drops another painting because that's just how it is. That's just how it is. I'm now just kind of going through all my social medias. <laughs> Uh, oh well, say la vie. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm mm 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 <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Is it? Oh yeah! Wait, did they release a new song for Milgram? Milgram. <laughs> I've been like super interested in Milgram as of late. They're like so cool. So like for anybody who doesn't know, Milgram is like a not a Vocaloid series, but it's made, but it's like produ it's like made with Deco Nina to like do all these character songs. And you're trying to prove who's innocent and who's guilty, but the thing is, though, is that, like, your definition of innocent and guilty is very different. <laughs> it is very different for the things because it doesn't mean that the characters will change, it just means you just voted for them and might either made their lives better or worse. So it kind of just depends. Yeah. Hold on real quick, everybody. I'll be right back.
Okay, I'm back. I had to do something real quick. <laughs> but, um, what are you talking about? We're talking about Milgram. So what is it? They talked about, like, the new... People are talking about the new song. What is it? The next person from, like, the YouTube channel from, like, what they're, like... From, like, who they're, like, who's next to get their next song is, like, the doctor. And everybody's like, you're not sus, but you are sus. <sighs> it's it's definitely interesting. Wait, who's there? <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. There's a little furry guy here with me. I like brushed against his tail. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> I'm not sure pretty much now um, I guess by this point uh, we can log off for today um, I want to do more but I know good and well that if I do it just won't be anything else so, we'll be retiring for tonight, guys. Thank you for coming today. We shall log off and raid one more time. We shall be raiding Maze. Because it's been a long time since I've seen her. The adorable, the adorableness. Maze with her Gib Sweets, blind VTuber. Be respectful, guys, and I hope to see you next time. What do I do now? I click the raid button. <laughs>